Hey everyone, welcome to Tent Talk, the farmer's market podcast. This podcast is all about farmer's markets, how to increase your market business success while providing people with fresh food. Farmer's markets are essential. Whether you're a farmer's market manager or a small farmer or food maker selling at farmer's markets, you have found just the right podcast. This week, the Farmer's Market Pros team is busy hosting the 7th Annual Intense Conference in San Diego, California. It's our favorite week of the year because we get to gather with farmers, food makers, and market managers from across the U.S., Canada, and beyond. The conference is also available virtually, live streaming on Zoom, and last-minute registration is still available. If you hurry now, you can still join us. Click the conference button on FarmersMarketPros.com for more information. This week, we're replaying our interview with Melissa Maltese, past Intense Conference speaker and membership and program lead at BC Farmers Markets in British Columbia. Melissa is a brilliant marketer, fundraiser, and advocate for farmers markets in Canada. This episode is jam-packed with tips on marketing your market through community outreach and simple ways to reel in sponsors, all the things you're likely thinking about as you enter your 2023 farmers market season. Enjoy this Best of Tent Talk episode, and we'll have another great episode for you next week. Today's encore episode of Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market podcast, and the 2023 Intense Conference is made possible by our incredible Farmer's Market Pros partners, including the USDA, Square, the Food Corridor, Market Works, Farmer's Market Coalition, American Farmland Trust, and more. Well, welcome back to Tent Talk, everybody. Today we are chatting with one of our favorite conference speakers, Melissa Maltese. Melissa was on the program at the virtual 2021 Intense, the Farmer's Market Conference, and she'll be back with us again, uh, but this time live on stage in San Diego next month. I'm so excited. She's the membership and program lead at BC Farmer's Markets in British Columbia and the facilitator of that organization's Hatch and Hype Incubator Program. Welcome to Tent Talk, Melissa. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. Yay, we're so glad to have you. And it's crazy that we haven't had you on TED Talk yet. So yeah. welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'm not oh, even Oh, thank sh- you. Can't even figure out how that happened. I so know. We've been talking about having Melissa on. The for one a that long got time. away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so happy you could have me on. Yay. Well, we want to start today just by hearing a little bit about your personal and professional background. You're so steeped in the farmers market industry and you know, have so many connections and help so many people, but how did you, how did you end up in this wild niche industry? (laughs) Definitely is wild, isn't it? Um, Well, I actually started off my nonprofit journey as a fundraiser with the SPCA in British Columbia. So I started a monthly donor program and I did a lot of fundraising and it just grew and grew and grew. And I also did, because it was like a a one project, I did a lot of media and public relations. And so like all of that kind of training ended up being really, really useful for farmers markets as well. And then I decided that I really wanted to do more event planning and then my love of food. It just seemed like a a completely like marriage made in heaven to be able to plan events, incorporate food and support local business. So I was hired to um, plan the Surrey urban farmers market. And then I did the new West farmers market. These are all communities in British Columbia. And then, um, most recently I was the executive director of the Port Coquitlam and Maple Ridge farmers markets. And then on and off, I've been working with the BC farmers markets association from like 2013, I think is when I started with them, uh, working with Peter in the coupon program. Cool. So you've been all around. I have. But you have a pretty robust nutrition incentive program there, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's really big. And that first group that you started with, isn't that the one that Sarah McLaughlin did that, like, uh, commercial for? <laughs> the heart-wrenching yes. video that made everybody cry? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to show that video in my class when I was a teacher um, whenever I'd talk about um, pathos and the use of emotion and persuasive speaking. So I'd always make my students watch that, like— the arms of an angel. You know yes, what I'm talking about? Yes, yeah. 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 That was during my time. That you, yeah. We played that a lot in the office and then everyone just cried. <laughs> That'd be 
a good way to release tension. Let's just let's play something heartrending and just cry once a day. And should we do that after this? Should do that. Yeah. A group cry, yeah. a little team building cry. <laughs> we'll do it at the conference. Get everybody. Oh, all that's the a good idea. Out. Let's do it at the no. conference. It would never end. It I would know. take the whole three days. Yeah. <laughs> um. So can you tell us a little bit more now about your work with BC Farmers Markets? Because you you've had a couple of roles there. Um, so what is your job description now and what does that include on a day to day? Absolutely. Um, so last year, uh, there was an opening for the membership and program lead uh, for, as a maternity leave contract. And it seemed like a really good fit for me um, in terms of I've always gone to our conferences in British Columbia. I already knew a lot of folks in that space. And so for me to just kind of step in and take over while Tess was on maternity leave uh, just seemed like a really good fit. So they hired me and I worked on our conference, which was also virtual last year. And then our membership applications and renewals. And then I'm also there to really um, lead the way in terms of our membership education. And so providing webinars, making those partnerships happen with the different stakeholders to get their information out to our members. Um, that's really a key component of my position. And then Heather, uh, our executive director, really wanted to make her dream come true of having this incubator program at Hatch and Height. And so I took on the project management of that as well this year. Awesome. And we're so excited to hear about, all about the Hatch and Hype program at Intense this year. Yeah, we'll yeah. touch on that a little bit uh, later in this this podcast, but then we'll really dig deep at the conference. We want to hear about how farmers markets can incubate success. Yeah, we don't want to give too much away now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, what, so can you just like real quickly, what is your membership program? Because not every market has a membership program. So how does yours work? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yes. So basically, um, markets are able to renew their applications or a new market or somebody that's existing but never was a member. And through their membership with us, they have a host of benefits. So we do lots of different things. They're able to participate in our coupon program. Uh, we also have like group insurance rates for farmers markets, with, whether that's uh, director or just liability insurance. We have, uh, again, like all these educational opportunities. We're offering um, board fundamentals, which is like a, a fairly costly program um, free of charge this year for members. Um, we also have these massive marketing campaigns that we do throughout the summer season. We have a website called the BC Farmers Market Trail. And we've had like, it's just amazing the stuff that we're able to do. Uh, this year, we sent out video teams to 10 different farms. And they did these amazing six minute comprehensive videos of these farmers on their farms, as well as at the market. And they've like tied them all beautifully. And then these will also be on the farmer's market trail, as well as we've done this massive photography project for each of our farmer's market members. And then they have access that, to that in their photo bank so that they're able to use all of those images um, for publicity or for their websites. So we do a lot of work. And, uh, you know, a lot of that is really from our, our executive director's leadership in making these connections with all of these amazing stakeholders like Tourism BC and like the Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Health, all of this um, work that we're able to do. And we've just launched actually um, the Farmers Market Expansion Program, which is a partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture, where they've provided our sector with $475,000 for equipment and infrastructure. So we're right now we're managing that um, funding on their behalf and each market can be entitled up to $15,000 at a like a 90-10 cost share program. So they only have to put in 10% of that $15,000 to buy tents, tables, you know, signage, um, a generator, a trailer, all of that stuff. So we're really instrumental in, in elevating like the health and wellness of um, farmers markets in British Columbia. Wow. wow. Can we move to British Columbia? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking our market north. <laughs> right. 
work. It's going to take a lot of space heaters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to buy some sweaters I, and I I'll be right there. I don't know if we can survive, but Puppy coats. us West Coast gals. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I almost take on this kind of like counselor sort of <laughs> role because I'm like, I'm the person who answers the phone and it can be about anything. I'm just like, just call me. We'll work it through, you know, whether it's like a board manager relations issue or like a vendor complaint, even like vendors call me and they're like, I'm, I'm having this issue with the farmer's markets. How do I deal with this? And so like, I'm just there to really like be that um, non-biased third person to sit down with people and be like, Hey, you know, like I'll sit down with people and go over their budgets with them or their marketing plans and like do all of that stuff. So I'm really, really hands-on with our membership and, and the people in our sector. Wow. Awesome. So helpful. Farmer's mm-hmm. market hotline. Yeah, That's exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> Butterball's got nothing on you. Yeah. <laughs> so your presentation at the Intense uh, Conference 2021, our virtual conference, was really popular. We had a lot of attendees that were just so excited to hear from you there. They had a lot of follow-up questions. There was a lot of chatter about your presentation afterwards. So we're really glad you were able to make it. And it kind of started some really great conversations. Um, and you covered so much about community outreach and the changing face of sponsorships. So can you talk a little bit about, like, how has outreach changed in these still wary of gathering times and just all the kind of ups and downs that markets have gone through um, in this what feels like a never-ending pandemic (laughs) cycle hopefully ending (laughs) very soon Um, but how has kind of outreach changed and how has your approach to telling people how to kind of come together changed Uh, Absolutely. Um, So even, you know, the landscape I feel has changed since the last time we talked. Um, It seems that there was such an emphasis on everyone to pivot online and to, you know, get their businesses online and do all their marketing online. And now I almost feel like you're like inundated with like ads and messaging and email newsletters. Like, I don't know about you folks, but like, I just get so many email newsletters. You're just like, there's just too much happening and things are getting lost. And so in, in my mind, like it's, I think it's still really important to make those personal connections. And even if your farmer's market is doing ads or like the email newsletters, it's still important to really be out there and join meetings and networking groups and really talk to people online through like comments and like interacting with people and like being on these different Facebook groups and just being like, Hey, you know, have you thought about the farmer's markets? You know, we've got this this week as yourself, not necessarily as the organization, because people are, they're so used to having businesses talk at them. It's really hard to really get that feel of the people behind it. And I think that that's, more and more important as we go on and you know like I still feel like the the farmer's market is this amazing place that has all this real estate that you know a lot of other community events don't have at this time and so we still have that space where people can gather and where um, businesses can advertise and be part of the community and so it's it's like an important place and we're privileged as an essential service to be able to, to hold that space. And so being able to invite other members of our community to advertise or to speak to the public is, you know, it's a, a big responsibility for us. And I think that, you know, we've done a good job so far. Yeah, I love that. I think that that's been totally true. We were kind of all like, okay, everyone stay home and be online and here's our message and goodbye. But now it feels much more like those connections mean more now than they even did before. And I mean, I feel like you're right about the farmer's market. It's like a space where you come to get to know people. And that can happen with sponsors and other community outreach as well. It's like this is where you're actually going to get to know people. And it's not just a message kind of sent out into the ether. And like hopefully someone will grab onto it. And like shoppers' guards are a little bit more down at the market. I feel like they're more open to Mm -hmm. these kind of like – direct advertising almost because it's kind of like, okay, everything here has been pre-vetted by a market right. manager. Mm-hmm. So by a market manager that cares about community, yeah. that cares about connection, like your values as a market translate into whatever sponsorship or advertising or yeah. community building activities or anything you have there, it feels a little more secure and safe because mm-hmm. it's not just some big like 
corporation face or something, you know, something behind a curtain or whatever. So, yeah, yeah I feel like that's definitely true. Um, do you see a lot of networking happening, like, mostly in person or online groups? Do you guys use Facebook groups or other ways that you – what are some other ways that kind of communities in the farmer's market industry can uh, work on their networking? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, in the before times, <laughs> we all met in person. Um, I find now that everything's still online and, and everything's still on Zoom and, you know, the Zoom fatigue is real. And I don't know about you guys, but like, I'm finding that the more and more meetings I go to, like the more and more people turn off their screen. And I'm just like, I'm literally here to connect with people. Like, I want to see your faces. So like, stop doing that. People. <laughs> Show up. Show up. I agree. Sometimes uh, I'm the only one with my camera on and I'm like, right? you know what? I'm here. <laughs> like I made an effort to yeah. like brush my teeth and my hair. Like... <laughs> Even though we told you in that email, you didn't have to today. <laughs> I know, still. I know, but I still did. Yeah, it's nice to see your face. Um, thank you. Um, I think what's a really, really cool thing for farmers markets to get involved with is city committees. I'm not sure how your government structure works in the United States, but in Canada, you have the opportunity to volunteer on a municipal level and be part of these uh, committees. And so I've had the privilege to sit on the Parks and Recreation Committee, the Agriculture Committee, and Tourism Committees in the different municipalities that I've lived in. And this is where you really get a feel for what happens in your community and you get to meet everybody who is kind of like the the head person of all of these other different organizations and so there's you know the folks from the multicultural society your first nations representatives like all of these different um, people who have this membership behind them this network behind them are coming to these events and they've all moved online, it's a really easy opportunity to pop in and being like, even if you just do a presentation, or you just talk about, you know, what's coming up, uh, just having that ability to like pop into a meeting and being like, hey, just want to let you know, you know, I'm here to represent the farmers markets, we, we are representing all of these small businesses, also like that, you know, the economic development portion of what we do is an important part of our work. And so just being able to find these opportunities to show up and represent everything that we have, whether it's um, food security and, you know, your low income food program that you have at the market, or whether it's, you know, if you're doing some fun events, so it's the tourism related aspects to it. Like we, we touch on so many different aspects of our community that are represented in different committee work that everyone does. So just being being able to like st- show up and hold space in those places and advocate on behalf of the work that you do, I think is very, very beneficial to your organization. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely varies from city to city in the U.S., um, big country. So is yours. I imagine B.C. may be different <laughs> than Ottawa and, and what have you. But especially in smaller communities, there's so much chance to get yeah. involved on city council committees and that kind of thing. And here, there's a lot of subgroups that report to those councils. And Mm -hmm. even in the larger cities, there's so many ways to get involved in your community. Yeah, for sure. I think when we were developing our marketing course, too, we were like, oh, you could do this and you could talk to these people and just developing like this outline of this list of groups that you could talk to (laughs) and people that you could involve because of what you said tourism, economic development, uh, Parks and Rec, the ag, like all these avenues that farmers markets are a big part of. Um, that those are opportunities. Those are opportunities to do that community outreach as a farmers market representative. So, I mean, that's great just to be on committees and be seen. There's usually like public comment allowed at the beginning of these kind of meetings that I've seen, and you can just say, "Hey, I'm with the farmers market. Just want to, you know, let you know about this new thing that's happening, or let you know that, you know, remind you that it's every week on this day and this time." And you know, people are happy to hear happy news at those meetings sometimes because yeah. they might be covering oh, totally. <laughs> might be covering something that's, you know. A little like they're having a hostile argument, or you know, you know. Yeah. Yeah. so it's nice to be like, hey, don't forget fresh food at the farmers market, and it's you know a little relief for that. So um, yeah, that's such a great idea. Um, who, what kind of person do you think should be involved in the community outreach? Like, should a vol- can a volunteer do it? Should it be the manager? Um, should it be someone who's a professional at development? What's your um, professional advice on that? 
It really, really depends Mm -hmm. on the dynamic of your organization. So if you have somebody who's already in that leadership role, like a market manager or an executive director, a lot of the times um, it's that person's role to go out there and make, and you know, like it's a part of their job description to go out there and make those connections with the community. However, saying that, what I really like is if um, I'm working with a board of directors, I want to make sure that when we're recruiting board members, there's a very diverse group of people on this board because for one thing, these are the people that are going to be leveraging their networks to go out in the community and speak to people. So you, you want to run the whole like gambit of, you know, somebody who's a senior who goes to the senior centers. I myself like may not be that person who can connect with seniors. And so if I have somebody who's already going to these, you know, um, networking events or seniors activities or groups and who's a leader in that field, I want to be able to empower them and with the knowledge and the work that we do at the farmers markets to go out there and be that representative. If you lay it all on one person, it's a very overwhelming and those meetings add up very very quickly so being able to empower your board or a volunteer committee like if you have somebody with um, a parent of a young child chances are they're going out and they're doing you know play date activities or like mom group you know walks through the forest well if you show up there with a basket of strawberries and you know like you're like I got these at the farmer's market and you're like physically like showing how much better they taste or like saying, you know, we have kids activities every week. It's also not coming off as salesy. So me as a market manager walking in and being like, hey, everybody look at me. Like, this is all the stuff that we do. Isn't that as personal as somebody who's already within that community going in there and speaking about their experience at the farmer's market, not necessarily what we're selling. Mm-hmm. Really good advice. Good. And that also requires your board to go to the farmer's market, which That's right. <laughs> is an important thing to think about because, you know, being a part of a board maybe mean one thing to one person. But when it comes to the farmer's market, it you do have to go to the market and like participate in it. Yeah, we're always reminding board members that we are, you know, work with like, hey, come out and shop. Like <laughs> this is your market, too. You're on this board. This market is a part of this group come out and shop. And so you can speak to your neighbors and your business associates from a first person experience about how great the market is. It's the in real life, yeah, Yeah. in real life version of social media. It's uh, using that network and that spider web of of connections. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So you, you also work on sponsorships and I know you talked last year or earlier. Yeah. Last year. It's all a blur. (laughs) 2021, 22, all one big blur. But you had talked about alternative ways of attracting and benefiting sponsors and, you know, marketing partnership kind of relationships where in the old days we would say it's this much money for you to come out to the market and have a tent to talk to people. There was a long period when sponsors couldn't do that. We only had essential items at the markets. And you had some really good advice about other ways to benefit sponsors so that you could still attract that sponsorship fundraising kind of push without having it at the market. Are you still doing a lot of that? Are you still seeing markets in your area do a lot of that versus – Uh, actually just have them come out and set up a tent at the market? Are they back? Um, Not so much. They're not, I mean, not so much as they're back in the market. So people are still doing quite a bit of the, you know, selling of the programs. That's what I always advise people to do when we have um, talks at the BC Association of Farmers Markets on sponsorships. And so I'm like, what do you have? Like, that is my first conversation with people at the market. Okay, what do you have? What can you sell? And it's just such a mind shift for them to be like, well, oh yeah, like these things are really valuable. And this is where, you know, everybody like walks by this tent. And so like things like your music space or your kids activity. So selling off like, or the ownership, so to speak of of all these really valuable, um, important programs within our community space is something that I have seen happen and still happening, which is great. Um, Selling your market day events, like the opening day and the last day and like working on on, you know, ad space within your newsletters. Like these are all such great things that you can have people with any marketing budget 
take advantage of within the farmer's markets because, and also I find like we have a pretty strict make, bake, grow um, policy. So you can't take necessarily, you know, you're like your local Tupperware lady who's amazing and you love her, but you know, like she can't have a table at the farmer's market. However, if she wants to like buy an ad on our email newsletter, talking about all the containers for fresh vegetables, like here's like a wonderful way to benefit them and include them in the sponsorship conversation. So yeah, we're still seeing a lot of work being done in that sort of alternative space where instead of people coming to the market and like setting up their big display and like sitting back and waiting for customers to talk to them like it's more a little bit more interactive and like you know like um Bridget or Justine was saying too like I love that concept of like this business has been vetted by the farmer's market so you know that it's got the same values aligned with what everybody else is there for. And I think that's really important to remember when you're talking to potential sponsors that you've built up this trust level with your shoppers that whatever people are selling at the market has been vetted it's reasonably healthy or it's at least very transparent about what it is, where the ingredients come from and things. And so they expect that same level of vetting for the sponsors, that you're not going to throw somebody into their <laughs> their market that is promoting something that's not good for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I we've had the experience that some sponsors that used to be really excited about coming out and setting up a tent at the market – and in fact, didn't necessarily love that once they did it. It was, uh, it was always the staff <laughs> like, this member. This is that, hard. Yeah, yeah. It was the staff member that drew the sto- short stick that yeah. had to go work the tent that weekend, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. When we had to get creative about sponsor benefits and look more at email newsletter ads and social media mentions and that kind of thing, um, I think they fa- it was one of those silver lining deals where at the end of the day, when you could have them back in the market, they said, ah, "Actually, you know, I kind of like the email newsletter." Thing. That's that sort of feels like a better benefit for me. So are you seeing that where sponsors are actually just as happy to use these sort of alternative methods of gaining access to your audience? Oh, absolutely. They're like, you mean I don't have to be at the market for seven hours? You know, right. <laughs> you just at the end of the day, sometimes you see them like sitting in a chair on their phone and they're just kind of like, oh, my gosh, it's been like the longest day of my life <laughs> or it's pouring rain. Right. <laughs> you're just like. And there's nobody there. So like, this is a, again, like, this is a really great way to be like, you know, the farmer's market stamp approves you and we're sending this out to like our thousand members and and our vendors. And it's just like, I just had to sit back and, you know, give you guys money. And this seems like a really good deal. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Very fun. How do you determine how to charge for those kind of benefits? You know what? The best way to do that, I find, is to set out your total sponsorship dollars for the year. So when you're working within your budget and you say, like, we want to achieve $5,000 for the season or $10,000, whatever the number is, and then you sit down and you break it out per market. So what does that $5,000 look like over 20 dates? And then once you start breaking it out into smaller increments, it doesn't seem like such a scary big number. Number and it makes things a lot more doable. So like, oh, if I sell, you know, this many market days or this many advertisements, like then it starts to be like, oh, it's like $25 here, $50 here, or I get one person and they, you know, do it over a period of time. And so it's a lot simpler to be able to do it that way when you start from the bigger picture and work your way down. And it's different for everybody because it really kind of depends on your reach and how much exposure you can provide your people. That's great. And then when you're presenting that to sponsors, are you... So I just got a sponsorship request because... Farmers Market Pro sponsors, you know, various conferences and this kind of thing. And they told us all the reasons they needed the money, which which was... Nice. No. <laughs> yeah, that's what I kind of said. Oh, no. no. And then she said, no. and because it's somebody I have a relationship with, the, the person running this event said, and, you know, feel free to give me any feedback on the, the sponsorship package that I sent. And I was like, well, let me tell you, need to tell me a little bit about what's in it for me. Um, you just yeah. Not because I don't love you, <laughs> but because, you know, what, what kind of reach do you have? How many people are going to see this? What, where is it going to be? Is there a link, you know, back to my organization? So um, how do you suggest that people approach sponsors? What do sponsors want to know before they decide whether or not they're going to pair up with you? We are long, long, long past the dates of people just giving money because it feels good. <laughs> like... <laughs> 
those those, those days, days are gone. People gone. don't have extra money just lying around. <laughs> no, those days are gone. And so I never go into a sponsorship conversation with like, this is going to benefit us so much. And also, um, I have to say, selling a farmer's market is a lot harder than selling, you know, a puppy with a broken leg at the SPCA. So like being able to be like, well, your sponsorship will cover the cost of my paycheck this week. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This barricade. It's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's not that. Yeah. It's not sexy. You guys like we're not selling sexy, like images of sad kittens. We're, <laughs> you know, we're, we're selling like tents and, you know, real life stuff that we need to make our day better. So I go in full guns blazing and be like, Hey, you know, this is what I can do for you. And like, I get it because I've owned a small business. Like I, I know how to speak in that business language. And I want to, I just had a conversation with a, um, a sponsor this week. And it was literally like a phone call conversation. And I was like, this is what we can do for you. I believe the value of this is $10,000. And they were like, okay, yeah, no problem. Like, it's just that simple when you start talking to them about what their exposure is going to be and how their business will benefit it. And, you know, like the feel good stuff is awesome and everybody loves that, but really people are looking at making an investment and they want a return for their investment. Yeah, I absolutely think that's true. And I Mm -hmm. think that we sort of just visually, as we were watching the screen during the conference last year, because everybody was online, we could just see light bulbs popping on over people's heads. Oh, wait, what now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I right? I have value and that's what I can sell yeah. to my sponsors. Yeah. And I think that this is kind of like a paradigm shift too for like market managers and just like the farmer's market space. Like we do really cool things and it is a really feel good. You go to the market and you support farmers. And I think that people just naturally just want to, it is this like kind of feel good thing, but for farmers market managers and associations to be like empowered of like we have things that we can help businesses we help businesses and yeah. we as a shopper we make your life better you eat healthier food your food tastes better yeah so, so kind of just like own that. that everybody wants to know what's in it for them and you need to remember a little bit of that it's not just about how do you yeah. help us it's yeah look how we're helping you yeah yeah Help us help you. Uh, so we're going to talk for just a second. Our time's almost up. But uh, just kind of a short preview of your Hatch and Hype program. We don't want to let out too much because we know people are going to want to hear all about it at the uh, Intense Conference next month. But why should a market start an incubator program? I, I'm like your executive director. I've always dreamed of having one. I'm definitely – my staff is shooting daggers at me. Don't start another project. Um, <laughs> please don't start an incubator. But, but I love incubators and I love the whole concept of you know bringing people together. We try to encourage the commercial kitchens, rental kitchens that we work with to kind of expand their offerings to include some incubator offerings. And I love it when markets do that. So from you, Melissa, why why start an incubator program in a a market association or a a market group? Well, to me, the question is, why not? (laughs) There you go. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, essentially, we're all doing it anyway at this point, but we don't realize what we're doing in a grand scheme of things. And again, you know what, at the end of the day, Kat, this is all about our value, our value as a market, as a sector, and what we contribute within our communities. And starting an incubator project really highlights to all of these different stakeholders within your community how important the farmer's market is as a driving force in small business leadership, in in accelerating small businesses, in having this like stake in the economic development and the importance of bringing money into our community. We see time and time again, these amazing vendors that start off at the market and you know like we're all those market managers we're like oh isn't that cute they've got their little like setup and it's adorable and then you see it change from like week to season and then all of a sudden they're like we can't come back because we've made retail and we're in all those stores and in my mind I'm like heck yeah you did like go forth you know like sometimes market managers are like I don't want to lose my people and I'm just like I want you to grow because you've just succeeded in what I'm trying to do in my community and that's 
launch all your asses out that window and get you to the stars, man. Like that's the dream, right? Whether it's restaurants or, you know, brick and mortar or like national retail. Or just additional farmers markets and a bigger team that goes to less markets. markets. For sure. Like these are the things that these people do. And it's this is such a fun way to celebrate that. And after doing our Hatch and Height project in the summer, one of the things that we really realized that this program has the potential to do is kind of break down those barriers for people of color and bring more diversity into the market because we're we're really trying to understand the market process as a whole to see where the gaps are and and where we are as gatekeepers in this industry and and how we're stopping this you know because I've had market managers speak to me and they're like we don't need any more vendors and I'm like really like have you looked at your community do you have everybody represented here in your space and then they they're taken aback and they're like oh yeah maybe not you know what no. And then like, how are we are like, we're, we're here to be of service. So like, are we serving everybody in that space? And are we serving everybody who has that dream of being a business owner? And essentially that's what Hatch and Hype is all about. Oh, and great. it's about starting those dreams, right? We want to hear wow. so much about that next month. I'm so yeah, excited. Her presentation is going to be fire. I'm so excited to yeah, yeah. hear more about this program. Yeah. So we're going to see you on stage in San Diego next month. <laughs> and, uh, and I know you'll hate it. It's it's uh, warm and balmy typically here in March. I mean, we think it's crisp. I'm so excited. But, yeah. We're, we're going to have jackets on and everyone from Canada is going to have shorts and a t-shirt on. Oh, yeah. Happens every year. All our Canadians are there in shorts and, and Hawaiian shirts and we're bundled up because our concept of really? what's cold is so different. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. uh, you'll be right there on the water. For you, it'll be warm. We'll all be having a good time. And Melissa, thank you so much for being with us today. And we're so looking forward to uh, seeing you live and in person. Yeah, we can't wait. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you. you. Have a good one. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for listening today. And thanks to our incredible Farmers Market Pros partners, including the USDA, Square, the Food Corridor, Market Works, Farmers Market Coalition, American Farmland Trust, and more. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode of Tent Talk, the Farmers Market Podcast. So meet us back here then. Farmers markets are all about connection, and all of us, operators, farmers, and vendors, keep learning. Connect with people just like you from various parts of the country and share what's happening in your area in the terrific conversations over in our private Facebook group, the Farmers Market Pros Community. If you're actively involved in a farmers market, please find us there, answer the three qualifying questions, and join the group. You can also message us on Instagram at Farmers Market Pros or email us at connect at farmersmarketpros.com. If you're looking for further education, check out our online course offerings at farmersmarketpros.com. Thanks for listening to Tent Talk. Please leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you access your podcasts, and tell us and others how you're enjoying Tent Talk. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss the next episode. Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market podcast, is proudly produced by Farmer's Market Pros, where passion meets profit. Today's episode was recorded and edited by Justine Marzoni-Mead. Original music by David Mead. Thank you so much for listening today, and we'll have another great episode next week, so tune in.